wa prophecy Sunday 2021 January 24 of what prophecy what prophecy praying outside the Africa I see the death of a leader in a praying Joseph Andrew Simmons takes a look back at his life he was by her side throughout the longest reign of a monarch in British history. For Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, it wasn't only a marriage, but a life of service to his wife, Queen Elizabeth II. Born into Greek and Danish royalty, Philip had a lonely childhood. He was taken under the wing of the British aristocracy. When he married the then Princess Elizabeth in 1947, he was a promising young naval officer. It was a fairy tale wedding for a country emerging from war and hardship. It all changed for the young couple when Elizabeth's father, King George VI, died at only 56 years of age. She became queen, and Philip, in the words of his private secretary, looked as if the world had fallen down on him. His naval career ended along with his independence. Prince Philip was sort of forced into making huge sacrifices. He was very much a, a man's man, not someone who was going to naturally fall into the position of playing second fiddle and walking two paces behind his wife and calling her ma'am in public and, and so on. And so began life in the Queen's shadow. Hundreds of engagements a year. He did, however, manage to find time for his own charities, helping young people and conserving wildlife very energetic, um, a problem solver, a sort of scientific cast of mind. So those were sort of, you know, on the positive side, the, the, the attributes that people admired. Sometimes though, you know, the, the, his, his detractors would, would, would say that, you know, some of his forthrightness could come across as rudeness. Philip did have a reputation for embarrassing and politically incorrect remarks. Whether he was being rude about the Chinese or Indians, or swearing at photographers, often a sideshow to formal occasions. Yet even though an air of racism hung over him, a staunchly royalist UK media generally forgave him. He was certainly given a much easier ride than politicians. Politicians who tend to make um, a racist or an offensive remark in this day and age tend to have to apologise a couple of days later because there's so much pressure on them. Uh, but I'd never known uh, Prince Philip to apologise for a remark. And uh, I remember once uh, he wandered over after he'd uh, said to an Aboriginal leader, do you still throw spears at each other? And I saw him do this in Australia in 2002. And uh, the next day he came over, it made front pages all over the world. And he just wandered over and said, the trouble with you is you've got no sense of humour, a complete absence of humour. So he wasn't going to apologise. His retirement from public duties came in 2017 with a send-off from the Royal Marines. Whatever the faults, his 60 years of public service was admired by many people. While their marriage was said to have had its ups and downs in the couple's younger years, Prince Philip remained dedicated and supportive to the Queen. She'll receive immense sympathy from a British public known to view her with respect and affection.